Thank you for joining us. My name is Chris Meckley from ACI Aquaculture. And today we're going to do this uh, short segment on Family Fabia Day. Okay, Family Fabia Day. Okay, so I couldn't even tell you all the different genus that are in this in uh, the family anymore because just recently with all the nuclear DNA and the studies that are being done, We've, uh, the corals that we always knew of as favias and favites, unfortunately they're no longer considered favia or favites and the only true favia species are found in the Caribbean. So what I used to know as favia speciosa, which was really a common coral, and then we call it Christmas favia, red eyes, bright green body. I couldn't tell you what the genus is anymore. I haven't gone into the studies long enough to understand why things were broken down the way they were broken down and it's something I need to get into. Eventually I'll get back at, back at it, but so Favia Day is a wide range of corals. Favia, Favites, Bertanoia, Goniastria, I think it's Platygyra. I mean, we can keep going and going and going. So Favia. Ah, love the coral, um, Favia Day. Love the corals that are in the in the family. A lot of them are fairly easy to take care of and maintain. Little known fact about them is they do live in mostly very very turbid environments. They love silty, dirty water, which is actually just as pristine as the outer reefs that are crystal clear when it comes down to nutrients, maybe a little bit higher, um, but there's a lot of silt and sediment that's stirred up because of the inshore reefs that they come from and the uh, currents that are going through those reefs. So a lot of times they're not getting, you know, crystal clear, pristine water like the outer reefs, but they do on occasions, you know, as, uh, you know, d depending on the time of the year and uh, the weather. Uh, weather is a key thing and how turbid the water really is and how stirred up it is. Something that we learned here at ACI because we are trying to farm every possible genus of coral that is available in every family and there's a lot of them that don't grow very fast and one of the reasons why they don't grow very fast is because we don't, we as aquarists, we don't feed them enough. Because they do, re they do have zooxanthellae, they do feed off the light. And the zooxanthellae, of course, in turn creates the sugars, which in turn feeds the corals, the symbiotic relation that, relationship that we find in all photosynthetic types of corals. But widely overlooked is the feeding aspect of it. I mean, we feed so much in here. Every day there's something being put into the system to be fed. Whether we're target feeding the corals with reefroids or our new Captivate aquaculture food, and we still and always will use reefroids because I think it's a very, it's very important to use multiple types of food when you're feeding because in the wild they don't get the same thing every single day. And if we can mimic that in captivity as much as possible, of course, that means the coral is going to strive, thrive and grow. Um, like we wanted to and as a farmer How do you make a coral that normally doesn't grow fast? How do you make it grow? Well, we did a video about pH pH does make a big difference and we learned that just in two months With the pH thing that we're working on but even more so what makes a Stony coral that lives in these environments grow fast that is feeding them as much as you can without ruining your water parameters with too much nutrients. Fortunately in here, we have a problem even getting nutrients to show up in our systems. Um, you know, it has a lot of, there's a lot of factors involved with that, you know, and I think I've talked about it in other videos, but a scrubber and then just the, the sheer biomass that we have in there of corals. I mean, 2,200 gallons, not many people can say they have the amount of corals that we keep in a 2,200 gallon system. We target feed the corals twice a week. We turn off all the power heads. The only thing we leave on is our return pumps. And with the systems being as big as they are, the return pump is 7,000 gallons an hour. It barely moves the corals and moves the food around that much with uh, that kind of 12 foot by six foot by two foot area of water for that incoming water to move. So there's a little current going in there, but it's enough to keep the food in place when we, put the, when we feed the corals. So for, favia, for favias and favia day, the biggest problem with them is, you know, they don't, they don't show their feeders very, very often. And one of the ways that we've learned over the years to get the feeders to, to the feeding response to start is to actually throw a little bit of food in your return pumps to make sure that it's spread throughout the system and that the corals can 
sense that it's there. Once the feeders come out, then we shut off all the other return pumps or all the other pumps in the system. And we literally go through and target feed, you know, 30, 40,000 frags. I'm courting, of course, all the mother frags, mother colonies. And we're talking about, about a two and a half to three hour process to feed all of the corals target feeding them. And we've gotten fast at it, but it doesn't take much. When the feeders are out and you, and you score some food into them, you can see them retract quite quickly. Um, and then they're back out immediately wanting more. Um, you can't feed them too much. We learned that as well. So feed your corals that are in this family because they will grow faster, their colors will be more vibrant, and just overall, you know, they will look different when you feed them more because they usually don't have a whole lot of how do you say it? Um, they don't blow up like a balloon, <laughs> you know. And and um, you know, with SPS corals, you know, when you know a SPS is happy, their polyps are sticking out. Well, when a fovea is happy, and a lot of people don't get to see this. If they have a lot of flow and a lot of current in your aquarium with favias or favia days, and you look at them closely, when you have a lot of flow and they're super happy, they kind of jiggle like a bowl of jelly. Jello, should I say Jello, um, and that is something that I always thought was really cool to see. And sometimes, you know, on fragments, you won't even ever notice it. You got to wait until the coral grows out a little bit so you can see them inflate with water enough that you can see that they're actually jiggling in the current. But you know, when a coral is healthy and happy, especially in this genus or this family, when they're really super inflated, they're easy to take care of. Uh, you do have to worry about certain fish picking at them. Copper band butterflies love them. Um, and it's unfortunate because I love copper band butterflies and I've got some now that just, you know, for aptasia control, once they eat all the aptasias, they gotta have something to pick at. So of course, what do they pick at first? They pick at the favias, they pick at the gonastrias, they pick at the acanthastrias. You know, so when you break it all down, um, fish, certain fish will pick on them, just like, you know, everybody knows that, you know, there's reef safe fish, there's semi reef safe fish, and then there's non reef safe fish. So. They can handle a lot of light, and they can handle very little light. Uh, Favites is one of the fastest growing out of the family. I would have to say what we used to know as favia, which have usually larger polyps and a valley between the polyps, and favites always had connecting ridges where it went from polyp to a ridge back to a polyp. Uh, they, te they tend to grow a little bit faster. They also usually have um, smaller polyp structures. Uh, the coral lights are smaller. When you would go to, say, Gunniastria, uh, they, can be, they can grow quite quickly. So can Platygyra. Um, there's uh, multiple others that, honestly, I wish I knew all the different genuses um, since they changed them. But um, one of the things that we noticed in here is the size of the polyp will determine on really how fast it will grow. The bigger the polyp, the slower it grows. The, fast, the smaller the polyp, the faster it grows. We have Favites pentagona. It's one of our fastest growing and on the market nonstop because we are growing it faster than we can sell it actually, which is very unusual for uh, an LPS coral to be that way. Uh, SPS, I get it, you know, they grow so fast sometimes, you know, when your customer base gets, you know, large amounts of it, you know, they slow down on the purchasing of it. With our LPSs, as soon as we release it, unfortunately, in most cases, we can't put it back on the market again for two or three months. And we try to grow enough fragments that we can release that are, you know, 60 to 100 fragments of these available, and then we have to limit our customers. That will hopefully go away in time, but um, as we learn how to farm them better, per se. But it's a fascinating family. It's one of the easier stony corals to keep and grow. Uh, patience is always a good thing, especially with the bigger the polyps. It, the prism favia or dragon soul favia, reverse prism favia, you know, everybody loves it. We learned that it's like the turtle of the family because we've been working on farming them, but it's really, really weird that once the pH got stabilized closer to natural seawater, how much we've noticed the difference in growth. So, water quality, Water stability is definitely key with this genus, if it, or with this uh, family, if it's something that you would like to propagate and grow out. 
Bottom line, just when you're placing these corals in your aquarium, be careful with where they where you put them, depending on the genus that you are purchasing. Maze brains, for say, as the common name, will will want space to grow around them. So depending on the flow that you have them in, is going to determine on where that the sweepers get taken and what around it gets stung because they can be very aggressive and you can lose corals and you're just like, why, what happened? Why did this coral die at six inches away from this coral? Well, a coral can put out sweepers that big and, and, uh, and, and take out the space for itself down the road. So bottom line, be careful where you put them. Once again, my name is Chris Meckley from ACI Aquaculture. I hope you enjoyed this short segment on Family Favia Day.